Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. For this video, I am picking up where I left off in my previous video. Earlier today, I arrived at the San Diego International Airport and today I'll be departing the San Diego International Airport on an Alaska Airlines Boeing 737-900. And you're coming along with me. In my last video, you sat with me on the left side of the plane for the iconic approach to runway 27 at San Diego with its close-in view of downtown. Today, my seat is on the right side as I depart on runway 27 and discuss the airport's single runway operation. You gotta love the weather in Southern California, but I'm headed to the airport for another love, flying out of San Diego. As I approach the airport, I can't keep my eyes off of flights landing on runway 27. I flew that approach just a few hours ago, but it's time for me to depart on the same runway that I landed on because there's only one runway and the airport is still in a westerly flow. My ride is dropping me off at Alaska Airlines, the carrier that will be bringing me up north to Spokane, Washington. Well, I'm very excited about my second flight of the day today, again on a Boeing 737-900. And I'm excited about the fact that I'm sitting on the right-hand side of the aircraft because I want some nice views of the California coast as we turn to the right and head north. I'll be flying on Alaska Airlines today and I don't have any bags to check, so I'm going to head right over to the TSA checkpoint behind me. Okay, I just completed TSA and up ahead I see a window, so I'm headed over there. This is a really unique airport with just one runway and the terminal on the runway's south side affords views of flights using it. If you're looking for 100% of the action in one place, you've come to the right airport. As this southwest Boeing lands and clears the runway, this Spirit Airbus takes off. This happens all day at this airport. With a viewpoint from Terminal 2 today, I'm also able to see aircraft on the parallel taxiway to the runway. I think I'm going to be spending a lot of time gazing out here. San Diego Airport has a mix of commercial and general aviation traffic, making things even more exciting and increasing the number of operations. And the diversity of traffic is astounding. In the distance, on final approach to runway 27, I spotted an airplane that looked quite large, so I ensured that I kept my eyes on it. It turned out to be a British Airways A350 inbound from London. Even though I wasn't at the airport the entire day, I think that this airplane has got to be the star of the show. I love seeing large airplanes in tight airports like this. I'm getting ready for my own departure and I'm familiarizing myself with the route we'll be taking as I observe this Alaska Embraer leave the ramp, just like my flight will eventually do. The route calls for a right turn towards runway 27, and then takeoff occurs in the opposite direction when the runway is clear and no aircraft are on short final. There's a lot of sharing at this airport. Here an Alaska 737 that just arrived pulls into the ramp that was just occupied by a departing flight. This is the route to the gate that I took earlier today when I arrived here in San Diego. This view shows the beginning of runway 9, which is also known as the end of runway 27. It's rarely used in the eastern direction. The terminals are on the western side of the airport, so departures are a bit high at this point, but aircraft that taxi by are very close. There wasn't too much excitement or things to do within the terminal, so I was grateful for the multiple vantage points to view aircraft on the taxiways and on one of the most unique runway setups in the world for a large airport. This is a very unique airport. How many airports are there out there that have single runway operations that are this big? I mean, this is San Diego. To have one runway only, it's pretty interesting. I walked around the terminal for a bit and grabbed a bite of pizza since there would be no dinner service on the flight, and I took in some interesting artwork, but I could not help think about how soon I would be part of the single runway action in a bit. Now again, I'm seated on the right-hand side of the aircraft, and I talked earlier about how I'm very interested in looking at the California coastline as we proceed northbound towards Spokane, Washington, but I'm also interested in the fact that as we turn the corner to the runway, we should be able to see aircraft on the final approach. The tower controller will try to squeeze us in between arrivals. That's exciting. Today my flight will be Alaska 133 to Spokane. And here's my aircraft. Today, I'm seated on this side at an emergency exit door over the wing. Everything is looking good, and I'm ready to board for an on-time departure. Let's head on over to Spokane. 
When I first sat down, I had a lot of sunlight in my window, but I did have a lot of legroom as the emergency exit row needs to have space for passengers to safely exit the airplane during an evacuation. The pleasant flight attendant asked me if I was able and willing to assist in the event of emergency, and I said yes, a requirement to remain in the seat. Boarding was quick, and before I knew it, our pilot was ready to call ground control for clearance for pushback onto the ramp. Got off the 133, gate 21, information, uh, yeah, pushback. Last 133, ground pushback, your discretion, Tango, Kurt. Uh, tango, pushback, our discretion, last 133. With the brakes released, we pushed back onto the ramp. I was happy that the sun dropped just below the horizon so I didn't have any more sun glare. Oh, and this is the first time I'm filming a video from a seat over the wing. It's a different perspective. The ground crew carefully walked alongside the 737 to ensure that the tug was keeping us clear of any obstructions or aircraft on the ramp. The goal of the tug driver is to push us backwards, then swing us around so our nose is facing out towards the active taxiway. Once we're in position, the tug is disconnected, the engines are started, and we call ground control for taxi instructions to runway 27. Ground Oscar 133, uh, where did he taxi? Tango. Oscar 133, runway 27, taxi via Bravo. 27 via Bravo, Alaska 133. We're told to take taxiway Bravo to the runway. Taxiway Bravo parallels the runway all the way to the point where we will enter the runway. This is a tricky taxiway as both inbound and outbound traffic needs to use it outside of the terminal area. Because of this, the ground controller tells us this. Last uh, 133, no delay past the intersection, please, for traffic exit. Okay, well, like I said, I thought I was going Did you see that plane that just landed? That airplane needs to use the taxiway that we're on, so the ground controller told us to move with no delay. The arrival needs to clear the runway as soon as possible so other planes behind it can use the single runway for takeoff and landing. We're moving quickly now. We're paralleling the runway in the opposite direction of takeoff, and in front of us, the tower controller is placing departures between arrivals. For every arrival, a departure is squeezed in. We were instructed to switch to the tower frequency, the person who handles the runway and aircraft on final approach. We continue up to the runway and wait for instructions to line up and wait on it. We'll only be told to line up when the aircraft on final approach passes in front of us. That's happening now, and as we're told to line up, the tower controller advises us that the next arriving flight is five miles out, which we can see in the distance. Last 133 Limburg Tower, traffic five miles, final runway 27, line up, wait. Runway 27, last 133. We're now taxiing onto the runway, considering that just five miles from the airport, another airplane wants to land on the runway that we're entering now. We can't take off yet because we know a plane just landed in front of us, so we must wait for the controller to tell that airplane that landed to clear the runway. But in the meantime, well, at least until we turn the corner, I keep my eyes on the airplane on final approach. The aircraft that just landed has finally slowed down enough for the controller to tell him to turn left and clear runway 27 for us. Oh, 410, turn left, Bravo 8, left turn on to Bravo, traffic on Bravo is turning into the alley, contact ground one off. All right, Bravo 8, Bravo, we copy the traffic going into the alley, southwest 410, over to ground. All right, that airplane just vacated the runway and we're now clear for takeoff with traffic on final approach behind us. Left 133, wind 2104, runway 27, third takeoff. Left takeoff 27, left 133. That was an example of perfect sequencing of a departure between two arrivals at this single runway airport. We now have 9,400 feet of runway to ourselves and we're accelerating quickly. Obviously a plane needs to land behind us, but there's plenty of spacing between us. The terminal area that we departed from is on the other side of the aircraft, so the view out the window here is the north side of the airport. We're on runway 27, headed towards the Pacific Ocean, away from the city, so we won't have the downtown city view. This direction of flight is extremely common at this airport. Have you ever landed or departed in San Diego in the opposite direction? If so, let me know in the comments section below. I've never experienced that. It's pretty rare. We are now airborne off of San Diego's runway 27, clear of all of the traffic in the area. We fly runway heading for a short period of time and then turn to the right slightly following the departure procedure. As we become a little bit higher, we are instructed to contact the SoCal departure controller. That's the controller that will handle air traffic control for the departure out of the Southern California area. That's 133, connect with the departure. That's it for ATC for this video, but the video's not over yet. We're flying to the north to Spokane, Washington. I chose the right side so I could see the coastline and our departure takes us out over the ocean before we work our way northbound. 
Our climb out is under the guidance of the Southern California TRACON, which handles low altitude traffic in the southern portion of the state of California, including Los Angeles. Once we get higher, we'll talk to the Los Angeles Air Route Traffic Control Center, followed by a few other high altitude centers before we descend and talk to Spokane Approach Control and the Spokane Tower. after takeoff and flying up the California coast, we flew by the Los Angeles area. We actually flew right over Los Angeles airport, and the view on the right side of the plane afforded me the opportunity to see all of the city lights of the City of Angels and beyond as the sun set and darkness emerged. The rest of the flight was uneventful. Alaska Airlines provided a small snack, and before I knew it, we were on final approach to the Spokane International Airport. The flight attendants did their safety checks rather late, and the cabin lights were not turned off until moments before touchdown, so it was a little bit hard to film the approach this evening. I was actually shaking the camera a little bit because I was turning my head back to see if the flight attendants were actually seated. Rest assured, they were seated, and we were able to safely land on the runway. Well, that concludes this video. I hope you learned how a single runway airport operation works. There aren't many airports out there with a single runway that are as large as San Diego. Thank you so much for watching this video, everybody. If you haven't done so already, I invite you to click on the subscribe button to be alerted when I post my next informative aviation video. Thank you so much and take care.